Hey guys, how's it going? And welcome back. Well, it is time to do some upgrades to the HSP monster truck that I've had for a while. Uh, originally when I got this, I think it had a green body on it. It's had a few. Um, still haven't bought a new actual body for it, but that is coming very soon because I want to put another normal HSP body on it. But anyways, these are the big tires that I got in that were a little bit bigger than stock and uh, I'm just going to grab one of them so that we can compare here. They're not a whole lot bigger, but they're a little bigger. So I figure, well, what the heck, they should work. Because my other tires are kind of, well, the rims are kind of done on them. The tires are good, but I like to find some rims and just boil those tires off and put them on a new set of rims. So what I got here is a four-pole... 3300 kV motor, so it's the same kV as a stock motor, uh, but it's four pole instead of two pole. And I was checking the sheet that came with the motor. This is called a 36 slot series brushless motor. Um, and according to specs here down below, uh, 820 watts, good for 17 volts, so it'll handle lots of juice, 47 amps. Four poles, 3,300 kV, 50,000 RPM. Uh, length is 50 millimeters, 36 millimeter with fins for the diameters. Um, and 3.175 millimeter shaft. Length of the extended shaft, which is where your pinion goes, is 15 millimeter. So they have full spec lines for um, the four different motors, right? And I picked a 3300 kV because that's what it came with, but I also didn't want to go higher in kV because the higher the kV you go, um, it takes a lot more to get it up and going. You know, you do get a lot more speed in the top end, generally, um, out of the motor, but uh, yeah, no. We decided to go with the 3300 kV and basically stick with stock as far as that goes. I got my metal spur in. Uh, this kit came with a new uh, servo as well, which is metal geared, heat sink, and of course our ESC, which is a 2S, 3S EC, ESC. None of the specs say whether or not the fan will handle 3S, but we're going to plug that in and find out. Um, but anyhow, so taking this thing apart, um, I'm going to do little bits here and there of the video, just so it's not overly long. But the first thing you got to do is get this back cap off. And uh, remember that your screws that screw into the metal motor mount are a fine thread. So don't put them into, uh, don't screw them into the plastic because it ain't going to work for you. Um, not very well. And I like to keep my screws in groups according to where they came from. This way I know exactly where they're going back to at the same time. Now, I didn't get my pinion in yet. I'm still waiting for the pinion. So I figured, you know, today I'll do everything except for the pinion. Um, I think I have a pinion that would actually work uh, with this particular um, gear pitch. But I'm not going to chance it because I don't want to mess up uh, a brand new spur. So I figured, well, I'll just wait for the pinion that I actually ordered. So anyway, so this stuff all goes in a little group over here off to the side. I know that's for the back end. Then we want to get these screws out of here. Um, or do we need to? No, you know what? I don't think we, we're going to need to. We might be able to get away with it. So, let's put the truck on its side. And that's going to be this one. So there's a little screw in the back corner. It holds this little piece of plastic, so just put that screw right back where it came from, and then you'll know. Okay, so next thing we got to do is take off the rear tires, get those out of the way. Now, one thing I did find about these tires too is they are directional tires too, uh, so you can pick which direction as long as your two fronts and your same two backs face the direction they need to to match up. I also got to take off one of my shocks while I'm here because I got a shock that's got a bent shaft and I have to straighten the shaft out because I don't have a replacement all metal shock. I only have the, the plastic ones. 
So I'm going to have to uh, repair that. Okay, so from where I'm looking, next thing we got to do. Well, let's pull the motor next. Should be this one. Keep in mind there is a washer on this screw as well. You don't want to misplace the washer. The reason why I've got a new motor is because this one has a bent shaft. And I have a feeling that it was bent ever since I got the truck. Because ever since I got it, the one problem I've always had was nailing that trigger right away. And it would kind of stall for a second and then it would go queen, it kick right in and go crazy. So I found out that my shaft has a bend in it, which really didn't amuse me too much. I wasn't too happy about that. So, get new stuff. And that was probably contributing to the slow but sure breakdown of my uh, painting gear. Now this stuff is all, this is held down with sticky tape. And uh, so you want to be careful, so use something that works to get all that out of there. And the ESC is going to be stuck down with sticky tape too, so I'm going to have to pry it off. Now I got some 3M tape. <laughs> Actually, this is from a uh, was it uh, one of the mounts from my Liquid Image Cam for one of its own mounting plates. It's got this section, but then it's got a, a flat section. This I'm going to use for the ESC, and then I got a smaller piece there for the main power switch. Um, now, the one thing I did notice this new power switch, um, it doesn't have a covering on it to keep the water out. And it's like, uh, but this one does. And, uh, but there's no screw holes on the new switch uh, to transfer this over to. So we're going to have to take it that <laughs> it's going to be waterproof. We're going to find out, I'm sure, the first time we get this thing wet, what happens. But even the ESC is fully waterproof, so I shouldn't have a problem. And if I do, I can always cut this off. And I do have a spare one of these switches, I think, still kicking around. I can just transfer over. Because there's nothing wrong with this ESC. The ESC is actually perfect condition. There's nothing wrong with it. So, we want to keep it that way. So we're going to have to peel all this old stuff off of here. Anyhow, so I'm going to take off for a few minutes here and I'm gonna get rid of all this stuff and all the dirt and I gotta take lighter fluid to this thing to clean up all the plastic nice and clean so the new tape can stick. And uh, of course we are gonna put in the new metal geared servo. Figure what the heck, there's nothing wrong with this one but why not put the new one in anyhow. Uh, one thing you'll notice too is I did change my receiver. I was having trouble with my uh, stock receiver. I'm not sure if it was the receiver itself or what, but I put in a um, FlySky receiver which binds to the HSP trucks and its radio without any problem because it is all FlySky protocol. So no hassle there either way. Anyways, I'm going to stop the video, get this all cleaned up, we'll move on to the next stage. So instant for you. Okay guys, I got things cleaned up here and uh, just going to explain what I've done. Um, where'd it go? Alright, so I got this razor blade thingy here, 
And uh, so what I do is put my finger over the hole so that nothing goes onto the table. Otherwise my wife would probably shoot me. Um, and I just put some, some lighter fluid, it's just this uh, rosinal stuff, um, in where the sticky stuff is. And then I take the knife blade and I just scrape, 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 scrape until it all comes clean. Same thing with where the ESC was, same thing. Peel off what I can with the, the blade first and then put the lighter fluid on, let it sit for uh, about half a minute and then start scraping and scraping and clean it and scrape and clean it until it's all gone. So now I've got a nice surface here, it's all nice and clean, ready for the new stuff, but I still need to take some alcohol and get rid of the remainder of that lighter fluid so that the new sticky tape can stick. So just a few squirts each. And you want to make sure this is really super dry. Now you can use paper towel if you want. Uh, I'm using Kleenex because I don't have any paper towel. But I want to make sure that's really super dry so there won't be any problems at all. And blow on it to get all the dust bunnies out. Now that surface is, is prepped, but it's still got to sit for a couple minutes just to make sure all the extra alcohol, if there is any um, moisture left, it disintegrates. So while that's doing that, we're going to get out our three mil sticky stuff and we're going to pop that on to the ESC and you just want to push down hard on it so grab your fingers around the edges here push down really hard make sure it's stuck there good so now we got to do the power switch. Same deal. That's a little on the long side, so we're going to have to shorten that a little bit. This stuff sticks so well. I had uh, mounts on my summit and uh, there was no way they were coming back off, not without damaging something. But on this thick hard plastic it's not a big deal. So you got to peel it off with a knife but it will come off with some assistance. this being such a pain. Oh, I know what happened when the one backing piece came off it. Went the other way when I put it back on. Same as this piece. So this one's still a good one. So we'll use this. No problem. of extra security on that. So I'm going to do this. Oh, 
Okay. So, we're done with all that. No big versus garbage. Now that's prep. So, it's all ready to go on. But, I don't want to put that on yet. Not ready for that yet. Star. Now the stock servo on this actually isn't bad. I've had no issues with it. But like I said, they give you a new one, might as well use it. Because this one's all plastic geared. Okay, so this now, put it into here. What I want to do is I want to take apart everything that I know is coming off, get all that stuff out of the way first, get it all cleaned up. And then start reassembling. Pull this wheel. I'm gonna end up pulling the other wheel anyways to get that get at that other shock, but do things as I need to kind of thing here. There. That works as a little mini jack. These HSPs are actually pretty straightforward and easy to work on. Not much goes wrong with them. Uh, my wife has one too, and uh, we have beaten the living snot out of these things. And the most damage I think I've done to this, other than obviously stripping gears, which wasn't my fault, um, I actually had to replace um, just the one um, steering knuckle once, and that's been pretty much it. So, there's our old servo, plastic geared stuff. And they say it's waterproof. So now we got some dirt in here. And we're going to clean that up with just a little bit of alcohol. Not sticking anything back on this area, but nonetheless, we want it clean. Okay, so our next big job is uh, get the rear end off this thing, clean all that junk up as best we can too, and uh, go ahead and change our spur. Um, I think I've got enough of this. I should have enough of that out of the way. Let's just uh, line that up there. So this has got to come off the mount either way. Very good. Okay. So pull that out, we're all golden. Now I can pretty much just spin. Okay, so I'm gonna disappear again for a second, instant for you. Uh, I wanna get this rear end off here. Okay guys, we're back and got the rear end off. So just uh, to let you know how to get the rear end off, I'm gonna explain it. Uh, you've got Four screws in here, they're all long screws. You'll find two short screws back here. They all have to come out. And just remember the two short screws go here. Motor mount also has to get undone. There's three fine threaded screws for it because you are going into a metal motor mount. So fine threads and they're all the same length. Once you do that, you're golden, they're out. So now we've got to pull the motor mount off. Now you can't screw up which 
way the motor mount goes on. It's only going to go on one way to put the motor on the right side of the truck. Okay, and you can't put it this way, it ain't going to work. You can't put it that way because it still ain't going to mount right. So it only goes one way. You can't mess that up. You'll also find there's a bearing in here, so if it comes out, just pop it back in. You're all good. Now, is to get the spur off next. This uses a C-clip to hold it on, so we need something to pull that with. So I would recommend like a little, well in this case it's a dart that I've got. And just carefully pop that off. And then your spur comes out, like so. You'll also find a locking pin here. There we go. Do not damage the locking pin. Now, let's check our new spur. Oh, new spur does not come with a new locking pin, so we're going to have to reuse the locking pin. Okay, so locking pin can go back in. So, from what I'm seeing, I actually have less teeth on the new one. There's actually a few less teeth difference. There are different spurs you can get for this thing, by the way. Well, that's good. A little bit less teeth is never a bad thing. Okay, so we want to make sure we orientate this to go onto the pin. Like so. And you'll know if you got it right, because that'll lock. Okay, now the C-clip goes back on. That's going to be the tricky part. There we go. That actually went on a lot smoother than I thought it would. flashlight just because I want to double check all that make sure it's fine don't go away all right when things go on way too easy I have to question them yep that went around the slot no problem so good positive lockup good to rock and roll good to know all right so, next thing is put our motor mount back on. That bearing's still good, that's all right. So, now, we just finagle this in here, like so. And turn her upside down. Uh, I'm going to start with these ones. So putting this thing back together is just kind of like the reverse of taking it apart. Don't reef on the screws either, by the way. This is just metal screws going into plastic. You just go to the stop on their own, a little bit of extra snugness, and you're pretty much golden at that point. Because if you strip a screw hole, that's not going to be cool. You can go a little bit snugger on these longer screws, though. It's the short ones you really got to watch for. 
Uh, the motor mount screws, you want them in nice and tight. I'll give you an idea of how much pressure when we get to those. I'm gonna be able to get that. Well, too late now. If I have to take this apart, we'll have to stop the film. I'm thinking. Yeah. All right. So. Putting the drive shaft back in, this is what we gotta do. I've taken apart a lot of these HSP trucks because I've been stripping them for spare parts when I get my hands on them. I don't usually have to put them back together, but this is my main machine, so. And besides, if you mess up, at least now you know what you got to do. So it comes apart real quick. Okay, so we want a little bit of slack there. That goes there like so. This has got to go on here. Probably be an easier thing. Let's just take this out. Okay, that's against the flat. Okay, I'm not going to totally tighten that right away. Want to know how to change the drive shaft on your HSP truck? This would be how. What you're gonna to have to go. Well, you won't have to rip out your ESC and everything, but you're definitely gonna to have to haul the rear end off the sucker to do it. So, if you guys got any questions about these things, feel free to ask. Um, you know, if you want to see certain videos about this particular truck, something you need to know that hasn't been covered in this video or you haven't found a video about it, you know, just uh, leave a comment down below and I'll make a note of it. And when I get some time, I will do a video for you guys. I'm back into my regular job work season, so time is going to be ah, somewhat precious at times and other times I'll have a few days to kick around and do stuff, you never know. Okay, so motor mount is next. I'm not going to tighten them up right totally right away. I want to get them all in there first. Okay, now I'm going to tighten these up. So you want to push down below, push down tight at the same time on the screw because you don't want to strip the screw head. You want to snug those up really good. Okay. 
and that's it. Nice and tight. You can reef on them, but don't reef the living daylights out of them. And make sure, for goodness sake, that when you're using screwdrivers on any of your stuff, make sure that this, the bit fits perfectly. No, no slop there. If you got sloppiness, you're going to mess up the screw heads. That's a given. So now that we've got this done, now we can go into here, check our play. We want just a little bit of forward and backward movement. You don't want it tight, tight. And now you want that really tight. So now we want to find a hole for the front one. Again, make sure your tools fit perfectly. Otherwise you're going to bugger things up. So those are super tight now. So the next thing we have to do is start putting the rest of this back together. Uh, but I'm going to take a little bit of break and uh, I'll be back so it will be instant for you guys. So again, don't go away. Alright guys, last section. So I've got things back together. Somebody's going to probably notice this in the video but I had forgotten about Two little micro washers that had to go in front of the uh, spur before the clip goes on. Those are now on. So I did all that off camera. But um, anyways, I know someone's going to mention it. So get it over with. Anyway, so we're going to fire this thing up. So we've got steering. And everything's already pre-trimmed. You're going to have to center your, your servo with the trim. Put your trim dead center on your radio once you fire it up. Get that centered, then put your servo horn on and you'll be fine. Um, fan runs dead quiet, which is kind of nice. I haven't tried a three cell battery with it yet, but uh, we'll see. Anyways, um, I did have to rebind my receiver to my radio. I'm not sure if it's because I had to, because I switched motor and ESC, or if it was because I bound it to another receiver before. I don't remember, but anyways, you may or may not have to bind your receiver, but if you've got a bind plug, goes in the bind port, away you go. Anyhow, so motor. So everything's working good. That's all right and everything's stuck down in place, it's not coming off. That 3M stuff is awesome. The capacitor pack I strapped down to the top. I just gotta clean up my wiring uh, between my servo and my ESC. Get that done. So we'll just fold that around like so. And I've got my trusty little twist tie here. just wraps around like so. So that's all set. So I still have a free port for a third channel for lights or whatever I want to put on this thing. Whatever. But um, yeah, that, that turned out uh, pretty good actually. Quite happy with how it all went together. I actually got a Yeah, that should be okay. That one's sitting pretty straight. This one's off just a little bit. A little bit of fine tuning in here. That's all I need to do. Anyways, so that's all done and finished. So I guess the next stage, um, I gotta wait for the, the spur, otherwise I'd completely put this back together. So I'm just gonna put this all on the shelf and uh, let it sit till the new pinion comes in and uh, we'll get on with that. So now that I know these tires work, I'm going to have to glue them. And for that, I'm going to use Gorilla Glue. And uh, this could be a bit of a tricky process for some of you, but you gotta pull, pull this back a little bit. So get your glue out. Uh, you can use tire glue, CA glue, or you can use this stuff. 
really doesn't matter. It's all the same anyway. So we're just going to pop that in. Gorilla Glue definitely does not let go once it's on. It's really good stuff. And we're back around to the other side. Now, if we're quick enough to do this... Get some of that excess off there dries on. So we'll let that sit for a few minutes. Then we'll go ahead and do the other side, get it out of the way, and uh, do the other tires. So pretty simple to glue them on. So if you're wondering how to glue RC tires, I think I have a video on my channel on how to glue RC tires. I actually used, I believe, CA glue for that, but I'm out of that stuff, so I got the Gorilla Super Glue that I'm using. So while I'm waiting for that to dry, I can go ahead and do the top of this tire. done this in a long time so that's okay not too much drip there try and get some of that off before it sets in So that's my video for you guys today. Um, I did go ahead and rebuild the shock, which is another thing I wanted to mention. These plastic body HSP shocks, if I can keep it in my hand long enough, they come always with brushed HSP cars and trucks. They are the exact same shocks as the metal ones. Uh, so if you need to scavenge a shaft, then you can take the plastic ones if you have any of these plastic ones and put them into your metal body chocks uh, and they're the same so that's not a big deal to do it's just a matter of take the spring off uh, be mindful too of the direction of the spring when it does come off uh, that is something that's very important you'll see a tighter coil area and then the looser coil tighter coil goes to the top of the shock now the oil I use is uh, it's actual shock oil for RCs. Um, I use 25 weight in this thing because there's so many shocks on this thing, you really don't need very thick oil. Um, you know, so uh, this stuff works uh, quite well. It's got a good rebound on it. But uh, anyway, so I tried to straighten it, didn't work. So I decided to take one of these apart and scavenge one of the shafts out of it. And now we're back in business with our shock so all of our shocks are normal again i don't know how just the one got bent must have been the bad wipe out that i had at one time but stuff happens as they say so i'll let you guys go thanks for watching hope you enjoyed this little repair thing um i wish i would have had the pinion to be able to mount the motor set the mesh um when i do get the pinion though i will come back to this video on how to set your mesh um, with steel gears because it's a little different than working with plastic and um, brass pinion okay so plastic spur brass pinion uh, I got a brass pinion with this kit 
uh, but you can't use brass with steel because the brass will just get eaten alive in a matter of seconds. Uh, so you got to go steel to steel or you go steel to a plastic spur. Um, being that I will probably likely run 3S on this again, uh, I would rather just go with the whole steel pinion to steel spur. Because once that mesh is set, you're good for a good long time. Uh, looks like the only thing that got damaged here was this pinion. Uh, this is the original pinion that came with the truck and of course the original spur. Original spur doesn't seem to have any damage on it, but I'm going to go through it very carefully under the... Um, I've got a magnifier light to check for any chips and if there's even one little chip, toss. This one definitely has one chunk missing out of one of the teeth, so it's garbage. So I'm going to salvage the uh, set screw because that's handy to keep those, especially when they're still good. Um, and then, you know, goes into the parts bin for future requirements. But anyways, guys, that's it. That's all. Uh, thanks again, and hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll catch you on the next one. See ya.